Hello, I'm Dr. Rachel Cataru, a surgeon at the University of Alberta. I'm also a member of the Surgical Infection Society. Maintaining sterility in the operating room is important. Our patients are exposed and it's our role to protect them. It's important to be able to maintain sterility even if you're not participating in the operation. This is a final video of a series of videos on how to maintain sterile procedures in the operating room. Hopefully you've watched them all and you can then confirm your knowledge by taking a quiz at the Surgical Infection Society website. Let's get ready to talk about maintaining sterility and looking awesome while you do it. If you're just observing in the OR or taking a role which doesn't require you to be sterile, there are five important things you need to know. Number one, you need to be dressed appropriately. Please see our video on how to scrub, which begins with how to dress in the operating room. Number two, wash your hands before entering the operating room. Three, once you're in the OR, stay at least two feet away from the sterile field. This includes the patient, the operating table, the members of the surgical team who are scrubbed in, and all of the surgical equipment. It's easy to recognize what is a sterile field because it will be draped in green or be covered with a sterile plastic cover. During an operation, a member of the sterile team may ask you to hand them something. Only touch the non-sterile portions of the object and hand it to the sterile individual without reaching over or touching their sterile field. For example, if the sterile scrub nurse asks you to hand over a pair of gloves or sutures, carefully open the package starting from one corner and bring it close to the nurse without reaching or leaning over the sterile table. Hold the package open and the nurse will remove the item from the packaging. Four, when you're ready to leave the OR, remove and discard your mask. If the operation is still in progress, wait until you leave the OR before you remove your mask. Five, the last step is to wash your hands after you leave the OR. It's okay to leave the OR before the procedure is complete, but keep your movements in and out of the theater to a minimum. It decreases the spread of infection. Maintaining sterility when you're scrubbed in is a little bit more complicated. There are three things you should remember. One, be careful to only touch things that are sterile once you're gowned and gloved. This includes the sterile portion of your gown, your gloves, other individuals who are scrubbed in, the prepped area on the patient, and the sterile draped area. The drapes and the draped tables are only sterile at the level of the tabletop. If you're just observing, it can be difficult to remember not to let your hands drop down to your sides out of the sterile field. It helps if you hold onto a sterile portion of your gown or rest your hands on the draped part of the operating table or patient gently. Two, if you or a member of the team breaks sterility, let someone know immediately. This is called surgical conscience. If you've touched something unsterile with your glove, an unsterile member of the team will remove that glove for you. Do not attempt to remove the glove yourself. You will contaminate yourself. Remember, the cuff is not sterile, so you never want to have that exposed. If you've touched something unsterile with your gown, you may be given a sterile covering, such as a sterile sleeve, to place over the contaminated area. You may also be asked to regown and glove. Don't put too much pressure on yourself at first. Even surgeons break sterility. Just make sure you let someone know if it's happened and do what's necessary to correct it. Patient safety comes first. Likewise, if you notice someone else has contaminated themselves, please let them know. Three, beware of contaminating other people or items with your back. As mentioned in our video on gowning and gloving, your back is not sterile. So when you approach or come into contact with another sterile object or person, you must do so face to face. So your back does not contaminate that object or person. If you cannot move past a sterile individual face to face, you must do so back to back. If you're in a situation in the OR where you think your back might become contaminated to a sterile object or person, ask for a sterile back cover. This will make your back sterile during the procedure to prevent any contamination. You can see that you'll have to tie it at the front. 
Once the patient's incision is closed and dressed, the operation is over and you can scrub out. You can see our section on scrubbing out in our video on gowning and gloving. Congratulations, you've completed our video on maintaining sterility and looking awesome. This is gonna protect our patients from surgical site infections. Everyone in the OR is a team. So if you or you see anyone else who has broken sterility, please let someone know because ultimately you're protecting the patient. Now that you've completed our video series, you can go to the SIS website to complete a short quiz to confirm your knowledge on sterile technique in the operating room.